1940, the Germans marched into France and began a brutal occupation. Young men from all over the world were assembling to fight back. Young women were also keen to do their patriotic duty. For many, that meant working in factories to keep the war industry going, or farming the field to produce food for the nation. Many of them did join the armed forces, but often in roles far removed from combat. But this young woman wanted more. She wanted a gun, a gun she would use, and in doing so, inspire so many others to join the resistance and liberate France. In August 1944, following the liberation of Chartres, General Charles de Gaulle visited the city. The assembled press and photographers were fascinated by this young woman, eating a baguette spread with jam and holding MP40 submachine gun. In her belt, she had an extra magazine of ammunition. When they asked, she was proud to announce that she was part of the general security detail and everyone wanted to take her photo. A few months earlier, this young woman, Simone Seguin, had been only 18 years old when she joined the Front Terreur et Partisan, the French Resistance. Her first act as a fighter of the resistance? She stole a bike from the Germans. That wasn't going to bring down the Nazi war machine, but Simone used the bike to move around without attracting too much attention. Her life as a member of the resistance started out as a courier, delivering messages and reporting on the movement of German troops. All members of the resistance at that stage would have been fiercely protective of their identities and the identities of those they collaborated with, other fighters and sometimes British agents. Simone was provided with false identity papers in the name of Nicole Minet from Dunkirk. This would prove quite useful as Dunkirk had been heavily bombed and all the records there lost, so the Germans could never check on her past. Simone underwent intensive combat training with weapons and explosives. She became an expert in tactics and learned the sabotage skills she would require to liberate her country. Before long, Simone was involved in armed attacks against enemy convoys and trains. Her attacks escalated as the war dragged on. She was soon involved in derailing enemy trains, sabotaging train lines and blowing up bridges. All across France, the resistance increased their efforts to disrupt the movement of German troops and supplies. This was to play a huge part in the run-up to D-Day and the liberation of France. By this time in the war, the French resistance movement was well organised and extremely effective. It was being directed by General Charles de Gaulle and equipped by the British Special Operations Executive. And it's estimated there were 100,000 members of the various resistance organisations. Simone wasn't just a poster girl for the resistance. Amongst other attacks, she led a team of fighters and captured more than 20 German soldiers at Thivar. That's when she took possession of her prized MP40 submachine gun, the one she'd be later photographed with during de Gaulle's visit. Elsewhere, the Allies had won the battle for Normandy, having arrived in June, and were now headed for Paris. After the liberation of Chartres, and de Gaulle had given his speech, Simone joined France's 2nd Armoured Division, who were also headed for the capital. In Paris, French workers were striking and disrupting the Germans as they tried to retreat. As the German columns moved down the Champs-Élysées, they could see posters calling for the French citizens to arm themselves and to rise up against the occupiers. Parisians were fully aware of the approaching liberation forces, and they'd been inspired by the efforts of the resistance. They began to blockade streets and attack German convoys. Across Paris, Simone and many other fighters joined with the Parisian resistance groups and citizens as skirmishes broke out with the German occupiers. Between 800 and 1,000 members of the resistance would die in the battle to liberate Paris. Following the battle, Simone was promoted to lieutenant and awarded several honours, including one of France's highest military honours, the Croix de Guerre. Female heroines of the French resistance were often sidelined and risked being forgotten. But the image captured back in Chartres and the film and images captured of her during the liberation of Paris by filmmaker George Stevens and photographer Robert Capper would ensure that she and they got the recognition they deserved. 
Simone's story and pictures were published in Life magazine. She became a symbol of female resistance across the world and an immense source of pride for France. You can read more about what Simone did after the war at forces.net. What makes an iconic image? Let us know in the comments. Also, let us know about modern iconic images. Those with a military twist that harbour stories you think should be told.